Uh, we have quite the construction project going on at a DIY expedition camper build right here, and that's what, exactly what this is. And so when I started out to build this camper, I was really trying to develop a design that really could fit in a very compact space, but you have a lot of features, a lot of functionality, something for full-time travel around the globe, go anywhere, be able to live out it for an extended period of time, middle of nowhere in any climate zone. In order to do that, I had to create a lot of innovations. Here's one of them right here. Howdy, howdy, and thank you so much for coming back to my channel and watching my video series on building out my DIY expedition camper. Today, we're gonna to get into a little more details on my dinette benches. These are dinette benches that'll hold four people and be able to recline into any position all the way down to flat and make up a second bed. And of course, also be able to have a dining table that slides in and out and also be able to be set in any position to accommodate the different needs and also be able to do all this electrically. And I'll explain a little bit why I do it this way and why it's actually cheaper and better and also a little more on how I do it. So thanks so much for attending. A lot going on here as I keep continuing to build out my DIY Expedition Camper. Yep, 13 and eight. I'll keep me below there. Okay, so you know that I can keep these below these points. So I gotta modify my bracket. This is about an inch and a half to where this hole is from the bottom. So I'm gonna put a hole about here, inch and eighth. I'm gonna slide this port arm over, mount this right to it, and that'll take care of it. Give me a good solid mounting point and be at exactly the right height in order so that this tops out just right at the top and is pretty much flush with the front here like is how I wanted it. So it's looking good. Perfect. Yeah, and sometimes the brackets that come with things don't always fit perfectly for my application. So a little modifications and I get it perfect. All right, coming to you live, already equipped up. I've got to cut this bracket down where I put these score marks already. Try to cut new holes, these lower holes here. These are the holes it came with. I had to cut it down to these holes because that's the actual size I needed. And I figured I might as well reuse our brackets, a really heavy duty bracket. But I can't cut through this. Not without a lot of effort my bandsaw, so I'm gonna try here with an angle grinder, hold this in the vise, see if I can cut through it pretty easily and well. I think it's gonna be a challenge and to do it cleanly, but we're gonna give it a try. Here it goes. All right, take a look, what do you think? It's not the uh, prettiest dump, I think that'll work. That'll work for me letting it sort of mount. Let's go give it a try now. Let's go see if we can get this thing mounted up and it'll act sort of fit and be exactly at the right height that it needs to be in order to move the, the bench slide uh, up and down exactly in the right length. So all you do is take off that little bit there, uh, less than a quarter of an inch, but the end guard made a quick work of it. So that's good. Now I gotta do one more for the bench and possibly one more for another mount, but let's not likely, that probably is it. So that's good. Now you can move on and get this thing mounted and give it a try and try it out and see, move it, start moving this bench, start getting the first linear actuation of my camper build. And I have a lot of different things that are gonna be actuated in this camper build from the bed tilting up and down and sliding out, the benches tilting up and down and sliding out, a pass-through door that'll also be sliding up and down, another pass-through door will be sliding sideways, one on the cab side, one on the cabin side, and then I've got my two garage doors which I'm planning to linear actuate to open and close those and also keep them locked shut, and some solar panel awnings that'll slide in out as an awning, and so I got a fair amount of things still to do, and there's a bit more I'm sure than that, I can't remember them all, but oh yeah, I've got some other drawers that'll be actuated and some stairs and an outdoor injury platform. I gotta get busy. Let's go try this out. Okay, it's an exciting time. I'm getting ready to test out the first linear actuator in this camper, which there are many. I, can't, I think there's over a dozen. And unfortunately, it's got this proprietary connector on there and I'm just gonna hook this up to a switch. So I don't need any uh, proprietary connector and spend money on that. I wish it just gave me leads. So I'm gonna cut this off. I'm going to hook it up to my batteries, which are right here. I'm going to go and actuate this up, and i got to hold it away from the bench while I do that. Hopefully, I have my positive and negative to the right. Seems like black and red, positive and negative. It's just going to go the opposite direction if that's the case. It's already bottomed out. And so we're going to test this out for the full stop so I can make sure that 
I've got my my bracket cut and drill holes right. If so, I can replicate the same thing for the other side here. So let's get this thing cut down and test it out. And now hook it up to this linear actuator. Try to make sure I'm doing this safely. We're not gonna short something here. So I've got these positive, these little leads here. Partly it's also so I can reach over and hold this. Cause as soon as I clip this, it should start moving. Well, that's not a good sign. It did, and then it stopped. I know it's probably happened. That's probably reverse. Positive and negative are probably that. So I'm going to do is reverse polarity, right? I'm just going to go the other way. Let's hope I'm right. Okay, I'm right. Whew. Not breaking any linear actuator. I'm going to see what's going to top out here. Come on up with me, check it out. I've got a control. It's gonna land. Make sure it's not gonna break something. Before I test out its max, there it is. And let's see how that max compares. Oh, wow. It puts it right there, that is perfect. Gives me about a sixteenth of an inch of spare, which is exactly what I was aiming for. Oh my God, that's wonderful. Get these lined up. There we go, I am through. Okay, let's try in reverse. Removing power, switching it to the down position. Oh God, I forgot I'm in the way here. I'm gonna have to move. I'm gonna get decapitated. It's all looking okay. Everything's looking good. Stop out about now. There it is, stopped out. That's good, that's great. So that's the bed position. Let's reverse it back up. Now I'm having fun with it. Fun with electricity, guys. Okay, it's going. Since I got a dual pivot here, and I can tell the actuator is also slightly angled right now. I need to fix that with the upper mounts. Let's do that right now. That's part of why I've got some, some tightness and binding here. Not really binding, just tightness. Let's slide that over. Get that near vertical. I can fix that later to absolute vertical. But, so you're sitting here, ah, let's put a little cushion down. You want to recline back, you know, watch a movie or something like that. Now you can recline back and nice and cozy in your cozy position here. Not very cozy right now, but just a little framing. This will be covered over in some nice leather covered foam, padded. And so that'll make this really nice and cozy. That's one innovation right there. And of course this, when I do the other one here, this makes now for a nice secondary bed. This bed right here is about 76 inches across. Now these slide out and voila, you get yourself a secondary bed. Of course it's gonna overlap a little bit here, filling in this gap, but then these just electrically go up. So you just push a button to kind of give it the reclining position that you want. And the way that I built these is that the linear actuator there's one per side, so I don't have any synchronization or, or issue or anything between the two. The one will handle the load perfectly fine. I think it's rated at 350 pounds or something like that. I can't remember more than enough weight to, because only taking the weight of a person or two people leaning against the back, that's it. People sitting on it, it's not taking that weight. That's purely just sliding. So it just has to pull it it's really easy for that to do. But a single one doesn't really take up any drawer space at all. And so it takes up no space in my drawer. So I still have a really nice deep, about two foot deep drawer. That's about a foot and a half tall and about a foot and a half wide in the center on both sides here. This side has the electrical system that's going at the base of the drawer or below, just at the bottom below the drawer here. So that'll be, that drawer be, just won't be quite as tall. But when these are up, of course, you can see it creates a, a nice open space here. Voila! There we go. That's it. It's pretty simple. The idea of this here is instead of having class for latches that put in the side to really adjust the angle just right, or me building it so I get exactly the right angle. And of course, that right angle is not going to be right for everybody. One person is going to want it a little more reclined, a little less reclined, right? We all sit a little differently in a chair. If we have an office chair or something, we can set the recline position on, or even like a lazy boy 
chair or something, each person is going to set to a slightly different recline, right? Even in a car seat, people recline a little more forward, a little more backwards, where comfortable, and sometimes you change those up. And so if you imagine just sitting here working on a table and a laptop on the tabletop that slides out and that also electrically slide out, you probably want to be pretty upright. But if you're sitting back, you know, eating some popcorn, watching a movie or something like that, or just lounge around talking to some friends, there's going to be a different recline positions, right? A movie watching really reclined and just sitting around cozy up with some friends talking, maybe playing a game just slightly recline. So now this recline position can be set to be most comfortable for whatever the use is. And that's the real benefit here. Without any latches or a clasp or anything else, you have to hold it in place or pull those out. And by the time I had all those clasps or latches or something else, some slide bolts or something to hold it into a different angle position, it actually costs more than the linear actuator does. And so I might as well just put in the linear actuator. Now I have complete infinite adjustability between its range and, of course, I can do that just with pushing a button. And so that gives me a whole lot of benefits. And that's really why I went this way. It's not because it's like, gee whiz or ooh ah. It's because actually it's cheaper. It's lighter. How much does the linear actual weigh? I think it's four and a half pounds, right? So by the time I add two or three slide bolts on the sides here to add this up, I'm almost at that same weight. Does it take up any more space? No, it's all at the very back of the cabinet within the frame of the cabinet. So it doesn't take up any more space. Does it really draw much electricity? No, it runs on 12 volts and it draws a few amps at full load. All right, no load, it's zero amps. And of course it will hold that load statically like it is right now without it using any power at all. So no power at all, hold all that static load. I can push in and out, whatever. I'm trying to push in and out here. It doesn't matter, right? It's gonna, it doesn't take any power. It only takes power when it's moving up or down. I'll give you a little lead in as I already said on the other one and that is the dining room table. It slides out and it cantilevers out. This is so so strong, it can actually support my weight and it's not even topped yet or bottomed yet. The top and the bottom can add significant amount of strength to this and this will slide out electrically as well all the way out to the end of the benches here. So now you can have all these infinite different options, whatever is comfortable, most convenient, whatever, and the table can't slide back and forth. It holds a position while driving, holds a position while using it, whether parked on a slant, people pushing on it while having dinner, whatever it be, it is now locked in its position. And it does all this again for very low cost, incredibly strong, right? With very little energy draw, only when moving, and so it's kind of a no-brainer, right, to do this. So hence, there you go. There's a little up cap on that. Doors electrically slide. Doors electrically ramp open. Beds that electrically ramp open and close. Or yeah, so much to come, and I'll share this with you in my future videos as I keep building out this DIY Expedition Camper and sharing with you the features and functionality of the things I'm building and how I'm building that. And also, we got a lot of these things coming up, including the big electrical system and also finishing up the frame of this cabinetry and then covering up with some really pretty aesthetic treatments. So all that coming up. Thanks again for sharing and, and watching my video series and so much more to come up. So thank you for subscribing and I look forward to sharing more with you very soon. All right, hey, welcome back to my camper, my camper build. So much shit here.